Um, crazy is a good word, actually. Isn't it, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen, a crazy world? If you would have been invited, or if you would have invited me one year ago, you would have given, probably given me a complete different sketch up of the story or the question you were raising. You would have asked me something like, will the disaster take place in March or in December? And somebody, uh, and uh, will, at the end of 2012, there will be a redesigning of the Eurozone, Grexit, or what about all these uh, uh, questions? Now, 2013, at the beginning, um, you are asking me about the economic adjustment and dividend EU economies. So the question is now not breakup of the Eurozone, throwing out any member or redesigning the membership within the Eurozone or Europe. It is a question how we can deal with the economic challenge the European states, the Euro member zones and others are facing in these um, volatile circumstances. This actually shows that um, we have to see the last 12 months as a sign of uh, success. There was profound uncertainty over Greece, serious concern about Italy and Spain, countless doomsday prophets were predicting the breakup of the Eurozone. In 2012, the Eurozone proved its resilience, a year which the Eurogroup, the heads of states and government and the ECB took bold decisions to ensure the unity and the sustainability of the Euros. And um, one good news at the beginning of uh, 2013 is that politics uh, are regaining the supremacy over markets, which is a good news for politics and probably a good news for the markets as well. And um, let, me, let me give you as food for the discussion some statement on the current economic situation, what we, what we have done, and some of the pillars which I would see are necessary that um, if my, a, a new German speaker comes at early 2014, will give another 12 months of success in economic uh, progress. To let it say, to be quite clear, the coming months will remain difficult. The euro area economy remains weak, and our citizens continue to feel, in Ireland and other program countries, but still in Germany and others, the impact of the crisis. We are expecting a return to growth gradually, but the unemployment rates all over Europe are extremely different, and in some countries, extremely high. The difference is between 4.3% in Austria to unacceptable 26.1% in Spain. Latest economic indicators show a, a kind of stabilization and a regaining of confidence not only just in the market but in the real uh, economy. However, the easing of tension in debt markets had, has not led to a sufficient easing of lending condition in vulnerable countries. Moreover, sentiment can easily turn around. So what's the challenge? In a globalized world where countries are interconnected with each other, within, across, and across all regions, actually my simple answer is let's do the necessary to lower the yield and for, 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 to put it more general, stay on course with what, what we already have been achieving over the last 12 months. My clear message is credibility is key. And we have to deliver credible political answers in the different frameworks. For example, at the end of this week, on, 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 uh, on the G7 and on, later on the G20 level, credibility must be the guideline for all our policy designs. I can only war warn that focusing excessively on the short-term issues that can become a risk in itself, in particular, Fiscal stimulus and interventions on the foreign exchange markets are mostly short-lived and can even backfire if confidence is eroded all over again. Short-term demand management is no substitute for structural policy measures to improve the economic fundamentals. 
And actually, we as Europeans have very much be aware that the Anglo-Saxon world is point from the other side of the Atlantic, is pointing just on us, on Germany, on France, on Greece and others. But not only in Europe we need to make more progress in addressing the necessary fiscal adjustment, I would say that it is urgent that the United States and Japan implemented credible, uh, implementing credible fiscal plans toward balanced budget. Actually, New Year's Eve seems to be, was a very crazy imagination that my colleagues in the House in, the, in Washington, D.C. are trying to limit their debt ceiling. But uh, to be quite fair to them, they have been successful in postponing the question until May. So the question how fiscal consolidation and how fiscal sustainability can be delivered by the United States not to shock the markets or come to improper reaction, have to be given uh, until in the next uh, uh, months. And the same applies to, and, and will, will be de debated soon, uh, with the new um, monetary policy uh, from Japan, which um, to uh, European eyes is um, uh, uh, um, a contribution for challenge and not a contribution for consolidation. What is our strategy for more growth and employment. Key is that our policies need to be steady, consistent, and determined. We have to stay in the course by strengthening our economies, consolidating public financing, and reforming our structures for growth, competitiveness, and employment. There is no silver bullet. I'm always asked, uh, what do you want to do? One issue. And I usually have to answer, it is not just one single measure that will deliver uh, sustainable progress, but at least there are four pillars where we shall work on. Pillar one is strengthening our economies through structural adjustment. Pillar two is continuing growth-friendly fiscal consolidation and ensuring debt sustainability. And pillar three is reforming our economies uh, in the direction of enhancing our competitiveness. And pillar four is a path towards completion of the economic and monetary union based on a deeper integration. Uh, one of, our fav of, of Schäuble's favorites is we call for more Europe, which some of my British friends do not like to listen to. What about pillar one? Structural adjustment. The reforms are bearing fruit we have been made in the Eurozone. For example, saving rates in the private sector and, um, uh, and, uh, are going up. The economies have been imp uh, improvingly performing. And the current account deficits in most of the countries have been shrinking. And this is due not only to shrinking domestic demand, but also owe to gains in competitiveness and to recent unit labor cost de developments in several countries concerned with point to more rebalancing on the road. Mario Draghi, the ECB president, already pointed in a speech delivered in November that there is, has been some recent progress in the euro area convergence in terms of relative costs and of internal and external imbalance. Let me illustrate the extent of rebalancing taking place by presenting some results of the alert mechanism report of the e-commission uh, recently published. EU area and EU rebalancing of current account position is ongoing. This has been the result of the adjustment in the vulnerable countries, although development in the member stage with large current account surpluses all also contribute to the rebalancing of the euro area and the European Union. Deficit countries have experienced an expansion of exports thanks to gains in competitiveness and a successful reallocation of capital into export-orientated in, um, industries. Although these developments include both a cyclical and the structural notion, the structural correction appears to pre be predominant in most of the countries. Export performances have been improving 
And this is very surprisingly in the context of a weaker global demand. In your country, since 2009, by 15 percent, and um, by 22 percent in volume for Spain and, 19 per and, and Portugal, and 19 percent for Italy. And gains in price competitiveness have taken place predominantly in ma member states with large imbalances, sparked by the intense market pressure. Since 2010, the growth rate of nominal unit labor costs in the euro area periphery has been below the corresponding growth rate in the core surplus economy, for example, like in Germany. We are losing competitiveness at the moment. But there's a still lot to do. Structural reforms have, been already, have already been adopted and announced in other countries. For example, France will present its necessary labor market reforms next month in detail. The implemented substantial labor market reforms in many countries have to started to translate into significant competitiveness gains in the member states. Although the adjustment is taking place in many areas, there's a long way to go before durable improvement is achieved. Continuous and ambiguous and ambitious structural reforms are crucial to boost economic growth, job creation, especially in the medium and, lo uh, large, uh, medium and longer term. The battlefields, battlegrounds are making labor markets for flexible and dynamic, removing obstacles to competition in the product markets, improving national business environments, and reallocating resources to research and development, providing adequate education and means to self-help, especially for young people, and modernizing the um, public administration. It's quite clear that surplus countries and deficit countries are facing different challenges. But I would like to stress that Germany is not a contributor to global imbalances. The German current account surplus is not the result of an exchange rate policy or, subs or subsidized exports. It is the result of an open market-based process and competitive small, medium si especially small and medium-sized firms in Germany, which are strongly integrated in the world economies. German export supports economic growth in the world via technological transfer and productivity increases. And the German surplus contributes to a balanced uh, current account of the Eurozone in general. Let me talk something about pillar two, growth-friendly consolidation. First of all, um, a statement. To my impression, uh, the myth that deficits can drive growth has gone. More technical spoken, the, the multiplier of um, additional uh, so, um, f uh, deficit spending seems to be negative. We have some empirical analysis that we gained um, uh, a status of um, um, de de debt to GDP at the moment, where any additional public spending which is not sustainably financed is not um, leading to new, new growth. So it is not the deficit which drives shall drive growth. It is just the other way around. It is um, trust in fiscal conditions that are sustainable beyond um, uh, 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 demand-driven or deficit-driven policies. And if you look on the figures, fiscal consolidation has taken place within the Eurozone, led by rule-based fiscal policies. With stability to the new established stability and growth pact, we are, go we, have, uh, we, have, we are on good track. Yet we have to recall but, that the public debt in the EU has risen from 60% before the crisis to 90%. So we have a long way to go. But uh, we have to stay on a fiscal conservative track because our problems after the crisis will not raise about coming out of Greece or coming out of um, any of the program transit, but they will, for example, coming out of the demographic transitions, transitions, the aging societies, and new competitors in the markets. And, and therefore, actually, as a basis for growth, we need adjusted fiscal policies. And um, unless the fiscal and structural policies are adjusted further, public debt in the EU would remain re 
very high in the coming decade, and I would say this is not acceptable. So we have, st we have to stay on course. In the, in the debate, there are voices which advocate a more cautious approach to fiscal consolidation or even a call for expansionary measures. My answer is the same as I pointed out before. Short-term activism and fiscal impulse packages would be counterproductive and does not, do not solve problems but create problems. This is true for countries like my own, which is somehow in a comparatively better position than, for example, Greece. But many countries suffer from over indebtedness of the public and private sector, and adding debt and delaying adjustment, even only in the short term, will not help us to anywhere uh, to, the, to a better positive development. It does not mean that um, spending less is the, one, uh, is the one and only solution. We have to look on the quality of spending, um, which, which has not been in the focus of, of the debate. We have, the we have to analyze the composition of the expenditures by prioritizing categories like research and development, educational skills, and grow. And then this will lead that the consolidation is much more growth friendly than just putting on the brake. Pillar number three: reforming our economies in in the in, in the European Union. Actually, this is something where I would say that uh, the markets have underestimated the political will. And I underestimated the political progress uh, over the last one and a half year as a policymaker. Would anybody in this room have, have expected the European integration to move as fast as f f we did over the last one and a half year? Probably only a minority. I will go through just by naming some of the milestones we where, where we have... Uh, reform the institutional frameworks. For example, the six-pack, which is something which um, is implementing an analysis of structural imbalances and competitiveness, which go much beyond uh, uh, the old 60% uh, and 3% analysis we had in those older days. The preventive wing, we call that now, uh, will show his integrated macro anal anal analytical uh, chances probably within the next year. The fiscal compact, which is a type of debt break or what I would call rule-based fiscal consolidation, which is, um, which is an idea which uh, was decided at the end of 2011, brought into a contract in March 2012, and now um, dramatically soon comes into force since um, January 2013. The European stabilization mechanism as the answer um, to the challenge that a European currency cannot rely just on a Washington DC US dollar based stabilization mechanism like the IMF and has to develop similar answers which are on the euro base. And finally, um, the, the, we started the work on the single supervisory mechanism which will lead to a more uh, to a better understanding of the risk of the financial markets within the European Union. And actually, these, these, these name drops show how effectively we have tried to improve uh, the European Union's uh, framework. And this will probably lead in the next month into a debate whether a treaty change is necessary. There has been a, a president's report to be delivered to the heads of states, and then we will open to the debate of the future framework, which goes much beyond um, uh, the question I just uh, uh, already uh, raised. Finally, I want to focus on you that we have opened new fields and, and, new, uh, and enhanced institutions. For example, like the European Investment Bank. We injected additional 10 billion euro capital in, in that institution, in the next four years, they will be ready to implement more than 60 billion euro uh, investment. This is a tremendous chance for infrastructure uh, in those countries and those partners where infrastructure is a growth limiting uh, factor. And we, we said to the AIB, act as a partner for private investment. We need more private investment and private capital to, re to, re to solve our uh, uh, project. For example, the opportunity of project bonds seems to be, uh, uh, at least at the moment, underestimated in the public awareness and probably will 
uh, in the market surrounding we have at the moment um, a safe haven, but uh, uh, it can be attractive. And another debate I want to, um, want to focus on is concluding debate is a free trade zone. Not just uh, completion of the internal market within the European Union, which is um, a UK and Irish uh, contribution to the debate where, where free traders are, 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 seems to be concentrated, at least in the political debate. But on the transatlantic dimension, we had a debate with the late Bush administration on the transatlantic partnership initiative, which was um, a way uh, which, which was focusing on non-tariff barriers on the transatlantic uh, issue. Um, the debate wasn't um, as fruitful as we expected with the administration uh, that followed. But we had to, uh, um, we were very glad as, um, as Europeans when uh, the American Vice President came to the Munich Security Conference and opening his statement with taking up the ideas of the Transatlantic Partnership, uh, Partnership Initiative and offering the debate on a free trade zone between Europe and the United States. And actually, uh, uh, the deepening of the single market and the transatla uh, uh, transatlantic free trade can be um, a very cheap, compared to fiscal investment, uh, but effective contribution to sustainable growth. We underestimate the sources of trade that will lead us into, um, into our future. Ladies and gentlemen, this was my um, in invitation for, for the debate, 2012 as a year of great uncertainties and tension, but, uh, but uh, it was a year of progress. Not least, the case of Ireland has shown that uh, reform implementation is being honored. In 2013, we need to overcome the crisis and make progress towards a further fiscal consolidation, rebalancing and reform of the euro area. And if the Irish Republic exits at, during 2013, which I'm expecting, it will show one political message. If a European country comes in trouble, the European solidarity is steadily helping them. If solidarity is answered by behavioral change and solidity, this program countries are going to exit and can easily do their job without European solidarity. And if this is the storyline for Portugal next year and others to come, it is a very good notion for the European debate. Thank you very much.